The concept of white privilege, the very idea, is a racist logical fallacy. It's that simple. It's a racist logical fallacy. Let me explain. Let me start with the concept of a logical fallacy. Now, I've talked about these before. My favorite and one often used by progressives is the true Scotsman fallacy. And I'll put a link to that video up here. I think it's there. Maybe it's there. I don't ever remember where these things show up. Anyway, it'll be here or there. And you can watch that video, see what I'm talking about. But there's another logical fallacy. And if you take a philosophy course, a, a logic course, you'll, you'll run into these. And one of them, another one of them is the ad hominem, which is from the Latin, which means to the man. Maybe essentially it's a, a form of a personal attack. Let me just give you a simple example. There's a bartender in New York. Bars are open. I guess it's pre-pandemic destroyed. And there's only two patrons left. One's from Philadelphia, one's from Boston, and they're talking about the NFL. So the bartender ask them, hey, what do you guys think about the uh, Super Bowl a couple years ago when the Eagles beat the Patriots? Why do you think that happened? How do you th why did the Eagles win? So the guy from Philadelphia goes to, well, I think, you know, uh, Peterson outcoached uh, Belichick. The Eagles got a break on a couple of calls. They, they had some, some good luck. And Nick Falls had a, you know, a his career day. Probably won't be another game in his entire NFL career where he'll have played as well as he did that day. It all sort of came together for the Eagles. I'm not saying the Eagles were a better team that year in the NFL, but they were a better team that day. Now that's, you know, you can punch holes in an argument. You can argue about this, that, or the other thing, but it's a, a solid, logically reasoned and presented argument. So he turns to the guy from Boston and says, what do you think? He says, uh, these assholes from Philly, they all got their heads stuck up. Nick Foles is asshole. That's an ad hominem attack. Instead of arguing that, you know, Belichick outcoached Peterson or the Eagles, you know, the Patriots got bad breaks or whatever you want to argue, all of which, you know, there's different things you could argue in the Patriots case. Referees made a mistake. He just says, you know, you got your head stuck up Nick Foles' ass. That's an ad hominem attack. And you see that all the time coming from the left. You know, I, I often will post things on Slate, where most of the people who are reading it, not all, but most are on the left. And, you know, the argument will be presented in the article, and then I'll put up a comment presenting a counter argument. Well, I don't buy that because of, you know, reason A. And then somebody will post something that said, yeah, but you didn't take into account B, which counters A. And I'll say, yeah, but what about C, which is even bigger? And then the next post will be, you're racist. You got your head stuck up uh, Fox News. You must watch too, Fox News too much. You're a racist. You know, curb your privilege. You're, you know, and, and that's sort of how the argument ends. That's an ad hominem attack. That isn't just an ad hominem attack. It's a logical fallacy. It's a logically fallacious form of argumentation. That's not a good way to make your case. But we see it all the time, especially from my point of view of social media. I don't know how many times that's happened. You know, I'll say something or other, and then somebody says, curb your, curb your white privilege, or you're a racist, or you're your head stuck up Trump's asshole, you know, blah, 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 blah. Those are ad hominem attacks. What about racism? Well, it's racist in the sense that it attributes to white people a common characteristic. They all have privilege. You know, it'd be like saying of black people, they're all lazy. Or the Irish are all drunkards. The Italians all have greasy hair and wear pointy shoes. I mean, that's what racism is, to attribute to somebody, because of their race, a characteristic. I mean, do white people have privilege? Some of them do. Most people in this country are white, over 70%. I think we forget that sometimes. Economically, they're more privileged, you could say, than African Americans or Hispanics. But this doesn't mean they are all, just because they're white, privileged in the same way. I mean, when I was growing up, I was, roughly, I was a little older than uh, Caroline Kennedy. It would be foolish to say that because I was white, I had the same privilege as Caroline Kennedy. Or, or, or take this example. 
you have some young girl in West Virginia. She's not out of high school yet. She meets this guy. They fall in love. She gets pregnant. She quits school. He's got a job at, a job at the coal mine. They're doing okay. Coal mine shuts down. He can't find work. Becomes an alcoholic. Then he turns to fentanyl. And he ends up, he ODs and dies. Now, she's a single mom. She's got two little girls and no husband. She never finished high school. She has no skills. She's living on welfare, uh, you know, child support from the state. That's her life. She has white privilege. You know, that and uh, whatever they charge will get you a cup of coffee at uh, Starbucks for her. But you take somebody like uh, the Obamas, Barack and Michelle, you know, Ivy League educations, law degrees, solid family, you know, mother, father, two girls. They go to the probably the best school in the District of Columbia. They're going to go to Ivy League schools. Anybody think that when they get out, when they turn 21, they'll have less privilege than the two little girls in West Virginia who have a single mom with no education at all? That when they all turn 21 or you know around the same time, that the Obama girls aren't going to do well? They're going to roll out of school just like Hillary Clinton's daughter Chelsea did. You know, she gradu graduated. And she ended up, what, a job at NBC making 600 grand a year? I mean, I don't make 600 grand a year. My children don't make 600 grand a year. My wife doesn't make 600 grand a year. Maybe together, I don't know if all of us make 600 grand a year combined. And Chelsea Clinton's getting out making 600 grand a year. Why? Because she's got privilege. Is it because she's white that she has that privilege? Or because, because she's a Clinton? You know, race had nothing to do with that. You know, it's not race protecting Hunter Biden from his, the allegations. It's the fact that he has privilege because he's Hunter Biden, because he's a Biden, because Joe Biden's a big shot. What uh, uh, Don Corleone would call peasant Avante. You know, the peasant Avante. They're the big shots. They have privilege. More often than not, they're white. But they don't, all white people don't have that kind of privilege. Some black people do. And if you look at economic productivity and wealth and, and all that stuff, Asians are doing better than whites. It's not, you know, you know whites are here and then, then you have Hispanics, then you have blacks at the bottom. Actually, you have Native Americans at the bottom. But above that, you have various variations of South Asians and East Asians. What happened to white privilege? If whites have privilege in this country, how come Asians, South and East, are outperforming them? You know, did somebody not get the memo on white privilege? Did, did we miss miss the Asians? Like, oh man, we've been holding down the black people for so long, but you know, those Asians slipped around us. We weren't paying attention. You know, how come white privilege doesn't leave Asians in poverty? I'm not saying no Asians are poor. Of course they are. But some white people are very poor too. As is often pointed out when I get in an argument, most people on welfare are white. Yeah, that's true. Most people on welfare are white. So, so much for white privilege. So if you look at the whole idea of white privilege, it's racist. You're making assumptions about people. It doesn't matter how rich they are, how much wealth they have, how well educated they are, that, you know, that they have this, they don't have this white privilege. Like I said, that and, you know, a buck will get you a cup of coffee. Maybe if you're, if you're at McDonald's, it'll get you a cup of coffee. What else will white privilege uh, do for you? I mean, I always found this very irritating. I, I see somebody, you know, on social media say, well, you know, you're, 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 you're a full professor. You have this good salary. You got white privilege. You know, look, I've worked in academia for 30 years. I know what privilege is. I've been on search committees. I've monitored searches. And you can be damned sure that if you have a black candidate and a white candidate and they're roughly equal, that black candidate's going to get hired. I mean, we would put it our thing, you know, uh, minority applicants, uh, you know, we're looking for you. Sometimes ads literally say, you know, we're only going to hire minority candidates. I'm not saying that that's true everywhere in the world or even in the country, but it's true in some places. There are places where it's an advantage to be a minority. Why else do you see these white women who've been turned up in the news lately, who have been sort of uh, claiming 
faking it, that they're black. Yeah, the university professor claimed she was black. Yet another one, a grad assistant or something, claimed she was Hispanic. Uh, people claim they're Native Americans. I mean, why are people, white people, claiming to be minorities in academia if there's white privilege? I mean, simple question. Why do they do that? Because they're stupid? No, because they think it's going to help them advance. And they're right. It will help them advance in academia. Now, it may not help you in banking. It may not help you over here. But that's the whole point of this. You can't generalize and say that every white person in every situation has some, some form of privilege. To me, it's what I would call peasant avante privilege. That the people who have a privilege in this country are the big shots. Because 71% of the population is white. Most of the people who have privilege in this country are white. But that doesn't mean all white people have it equally, or that no black people have it equally. If there's all kinds of people as you move through the, it's more class related than color. That's why it's racist, because you're, you're pigeonholing people by race into categories and attributing to them a simplistic characteristic, which not all of them possess. Not everybody who's white has advantage in this country. And the idea that all white people have a similar advantage is itself nonsense. Like I said, I didn't have the same advantages as the, uh, the Kennedys. My kids getting out of school didn't have the advantages Chelsea Clinton had, you know, or, or what the Bushes had, or what Trump's kids had. You know, pr there's privilege in this country, but in many ways it's related to class rather than color. Now, there may be more of a given color in a given class, and that might, might not be spread around proportionately, but that's the reality. So that's it. It's racism. It's just, it's simply put, it's outright racism. So that's my reasoning. White privilege is a racist, logical fallacy. What do you think? Let me know in a comment. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Didn't like it? Thumbs down. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, don't fall for logical fallacies and keep fighting.